everybody. This is episode 21 of Heroines of the Cherry Blossom, and it is Thursday, July 14th, 2016. Let me tell you, we have a lot to discuss. Thank you, Anime Expo. Thank you. But before we even go into that, let's introduce everybody. Of course, I have with me the Princess of Noor, the Queen of the Crop, um, the girl with the really cool nori and scum pin that I absolutely loved and favored it <laughs> as soon as I saw it on Twitter. Sushi Geisha. <laughs> Hello. They, she actually sells um, uh, Hoshidian trash pins. As well. <gasps> oh, my God. Send me the link to that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we have with us the, the member of the triad. I mean, the heroines are not complete without a hero. And, of course, that is Smashy Smash. It's good to have you on the show, Smashy. Hello. <laughs> I love it because you missed it. I, while I was actually <laughs> dialing you in to Skype, I was singing a little song for you, which I accidentally made your like entrance theme. I'm like, smash, 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 smash. Gotta connect, smash, smash. So anytime you walk into a room, I'm just going to sing that to you now. I don't know when you're going to walk into rooms, <laughs> but just expect me to sing it at okay. all times. All right. Everybody. <laughs> but it's so good to speak with everybody and of course to everybody who listens and tunes in every week thank you guys so much for tuning in you guys are the reason that 21 episodes have happened so Yay. kudos to you guys that means we're coming up on our 25th episode soon and then after that it's 50 and then after that it's 100 and then after that it's a thousand all thanks to you guys so i think there's some steps between 100 and a thousand Ah, no, no, it's fine. It's casual. We got this. We'll be like old and in our 70s. Welcome to episode 988 of Heroines. Yeah. At the home, recording live. <laughs> Literally, we'll be like, I need a moment. I need to change my diaper. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, of course, we always start off the show with just a quick introduction as to what we've been up to since we do operate on a bi-weekly schedule. So, since we've been absent for a little bit, we do want to ask, or I want to ask, actually, the, uh, the roundtable crew here, what have you been playing? And I know what some of you guys have been playing, but I'm excited for you guys to share. Um, okay, well, um, Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE came out two weeks ago, I think right after we did the last one and um it is a we've talked about it before so i'll just do a quick summary it's a fire emblem and uh, persona crossover and it's an amazingly fun beautiful 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 game um i could talk forever about it but it's been great i've loved it um it just has a good flavor of both so um, I've enjoyed that, despite the fact that it's on the Wii U, but, um, but yeah, so I've been doing that, and then still in Warcraft, I'm working on Shadow Morn. I'm halfway there, um, and Sab got, um, the beta invite to oh. Legion, and I think I was, I was upstairs, I think I was in Warcraft doing something <laughs> with Smashy, and we were talking and then all of a sudden I was just like, wait. And I like ran out into Sab's studio and I was like, is that what I think it is? And he just had this smirk on his face. <laughs> and I was like, do I let you live or do I die and steal your account? <laughs> so I let him live. Um, and surprisingly, the beta is really buggy. Like, really? really bad. And this game comes out August 30th. Um, he, the demon hunter area worked really well. It was very smooth. There wasn't a lot of problems. But the main storyline, he got stuck in Orgrimmar. And he <sighs> couldn't get out. Like, he had to hearth out. And then he got stuck in this scenario that has, like, we won't go into spoilers, but... It's what kind of starts off everything, and you're cued into a scenario. Well, he got stuck there, so he had to hearth out. And he went to Orgrimmar, and he got stuck there and had to wait for his hearthstone to come up so he could hearth out. <laughs> and it was so funny, because I was watching him, right? And he's sitting in, um, in, what is it? Something hold. 
Grimash Hold. Oh, Grimash yeah. Hold. He's yeah. sitting in there, and we're like, well, what do we do? And you would see all the new people that just got there come running in, and they just look so excited, like, bouncing in. And then they get there, and they look around. There's no NPCs. There's nothing. And so they go to leave, and they can't get out. <laughs> oh, and man. Everyone was just sitting on the floor, and this boomkin came running in and did that whole thing and stopped next to Sab and just typed and say, this really sucks. <laughs> like, yeah, it does. <laughs> But, um, so I don't know about any of the changes, like, Death Knights are very different, it looks, by their talent. I don't know. I haven't paid any attention to, like, the data mining, so, um, I just looked over his shoulder for a little bit, so that was cool to see. And you lose your shield. Oh my god, yeah, so Holy Pallies <laughs> lose their shields. What? Yeah, I know. I have a shield collection on my pally. Like, I'm going to have to, her off spec, I'll have to drop Rhett, I guess. But it's just, it's so sad. So, I'm like playing it up until then so I can get all the shield goodness out of it. You get a book now, but I saw someone on the beta. The book looks like a crotch cover. Like it's Wait, not what? it's not positioned <laughs> properly, so the book is like in your crotch. <laughs> so That's it's like so a cod weird. piece. <laughs> so yeah. Um so as a dis priest and holy pally as my two main characters, I was very upset by that. So but it's been cool to see. I look forward to the end of August when I'll probably p- play it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I got back into Hearthstone. Sab has been addicted to it, so he's got me back into it as well. Um, I found a really good podcast, because I'm not very good at Hearthstone. <laughs> I usually have assistance from Smashy and Sab um, when I play it, and I don't like to do ranking because it makes me very nervous. Um, but there's a really cool podcast I found called The Angry Chicken that is actually really great and really helpful and it makes me feel smarter like I'm starting to understand some things that people probably understood when they and the game first came out so um that's pretty cool that's been fun um Pokemon Go so I picked it up when it first came out and I could never log in ever and I got so upset because everyone including you pizza we're out, like, catching Pokemon, leveling <laughs> up. And I'm like, I don't want to be a killjoy because I've wanted Pokemon Go. We talked about it a few episodes ago. Mm-hmm. and But I could never get in, and I got so salty about it. Like, just so pissed off that I deleted the app. Well, everyone kept playing it. And so I was like, damn it. So I Googled why I couldn't log in. Well, it's mm-hmm. because I was using my Pokemon Trainer account, not my Google account. Oh yeah, they haven't implemented the Pokemon Trainer yet. They I don't did, think. but it had it was buggy up until like yesterday or the day before they fixed the servers. Mm-hmm. But no one said anything, so I'm sitting there like a dumbass trying to log in on my stupid Pokemon Trainer account because I'm hardcore, and everyone else is on their Google account, and I don't know why I can't get in. So I felt stupid. Um, but so I'm in there. I've gotten coworkers to play it. Um, I caught a Pokemon on my boss's desk, like all over the office. It's great. And Sav had a bit of a drama because Sav works at an art gallery and there's a statue out front that is a polka stop. And his boss couldn't understand why all these people were coming up and standing in front of the statue. So you know, Sav looked it up and did all this stuff and found out what it was. And his boss was going to write Nintendo a letter claiming that he didn't ask for that and he wanted it to be removed. Like, all this crazy stuff. So, we both downloaded it and we just like to piss off his boss. So, we've been playing Pokemon at his workplace just to upset his boss. Um, but yeah, apparently, like, you had to submit to be a Poke stop or something and like tons of businesses applied and only you know select few got in I don't know that's what I read I don't know if it's true but 
so that's been fun. Um, I think Smashy just started playing it yesterday. Oh! A, a tiny amount, and then I stopped again. It's bad. I just... It's bad. Um, <sighs> <laughs> so, and of course, Fire Emblem, I'm playing Awakening. I finally unlocked two of Well, I finally captured two children. Captured. I rescued <laughs> two children. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I downloaded the beach DLC, so I'm probably going to do that this weekend. And then Fire Emblem Fates, I'm closing in on my last three pairs in the game, and then everyone will be paired up with someone, including adults and children. And, like, I tweeted late at night the other night because I was really proud of my spreadsheet. Like, it looks amazing, and then I sit there and I'm like, wow... That's a lot of time and energy that I put into this <laughs> because, you know, well, you know, you guys play Fire Emblem, so. Oh, yeah. But, um. I don't play Fire Emblem, I don't like it. Yeah, I know you hate it. So, I'm, I, I'll have to figure out what to do next after I do those three pairs. I'm slowly leveling everyone with Eternal Seals and I don't know, we'll see. Um, I started, I was on vacation a couple weeks ago and I started Persona 3, my new game plus, just because I missed Akihiko and (laughs) I unlocked the first Akihiko Friday where he showed up and it was great. So, um, I probably won't pick it up again until I miss him again, but it was fun to see that game. Um, and then a game that came out this week, right, Smashy? Yes, this Tuesday. Is Seventh Dragon Code, or Seventh Dragon Three Code VFD, and it's just a anime bullshit game that is a JRPG. I get to play a loli who's a samurai, and I dance all cute, so I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, which wait, which one's the loli samurai? Well, you would want to be the maid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I played the demo. I was totally the maid. I yeah. <laughs> I was all about that. I was like, yeah, man. Yeah, so the, and what's cool is your demo transfers over. So your save file transfers over and you can still customize your character and you get like some benefits from it. You get some potions and I think extra XP or something like that. Yeah, and you can use any character model with any of the uh, character classes. You're not bound into. Oh, One character model with any class, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have, well, I don't know about Smashy. I haven't played it that much <laughs> at all. I've been just doing no. Fire Emblem all week, so hopefully I'll get into it this weekend. So wait, it's already out or it's coming out? It came it's out, already out last Tuesday. Okay. okay. This Tuesday. Perfect. I'm going to have to pick that up. <laughs> yeah. It has romance elements to it as well. So, Sold. Yeah. You can date people and they'll give you swords what? and weapons and shit. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, that, that's what the website says. So we'll I'm see. In. Um, I was gifted by some random person the Sony <coughs> Kami game. Oh shit! <laughs> Which I'm very proud of, Smashy. He'll, I'll let him talk about it, but he, he took on a challenge this week, and I was very proud of him. But, yeah, so I've been gifted that game. I did the um, the intro. It was very interesting. There's a lot of bouncing. and <laughs> 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 But it is the dear sweet Sonico that everybody likes. So uh, I do want to test that out. And then... Lastly, it's not a game, but when I was on vacation, I realized I had time to catch up on my reading, and I've been wanting to read this horror manga that I heard about, and it's Yuzumaki. Mm -hmm. It's terrifying. I love it. I'm really terrified. I I worry about snail people right now. Have you ever watched the movie for Uzumaki? No. Oh, you should. I'm scared. (laughs) Um, no, no, don't be scared. It Okay, be scared. That's fine. That's actually pretty <laughs> legitimate. I can't even try to break that. Well, the one I really want, I know they made a movie out of it. I think it's called Tomi. Tomi? Oh, T-O-M-I-E. I think that's M-I-E. Mhm. 
yeah, I want to read that one and I want to see that, but, um, normally stuff like this doesn't bother me, but it ended up in my dream. So I know it really like disturbed me <laughs> if it did that much, but if anyone's in to a Tome games that's listening to this that likes horror mangas and you haven't read it yet because I'm old to to the game that would be a good one to read about and watch out for snail people they uh, exist you should you should really watch the movie in the daylight don't watch it at night oh, God. you should watch the movie because no you if you watch it at night like I made the fatal mistake of doing I was petrified by everything. I didn't go outside, didn't leave. See, it's not, in the manga, it wasn't necessarily the stories that bothered me. It was the artwork. Like, is it similar to, like, I don't know. I haven't read the manga. I was introduced to Uzumaki from the movie, so mm. I haven't read the manga. It, the artwork is what bothered me, like, the most. Like, I, it just terrified me, but I will check it out. I will put it on my list. And that's all I've been doing lately. Oh, man. What about you, Smashy? What have you been up to? Well, I played through Sonic Kami. Yeah. It's a game about Good photographing job. Sonic. I did it, guys. Uh, I finished... I've gotten two different endings in the game so far. I wish I'd looked up the extra number, but I want to say there's 18 endings, 21 endings, something like that. There's a lot of different endings to the game. But I managed to get two of them. The first ending was just very bizarre. Like Hilarious. the story's going Yeah. <laughs> the story's going one direction. I'm like texting Zay the other time. I'm like, oh my god, it's going so good. And then just suddenly the story's just like, nope, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Like you I, should, have, I should have like screenshot uh, his tweet or his text messages because it was literally like, like oh, I got the good oh ending. God, so good. We're doing great. Sonica loves me. Oh he my god, I'm, so dead. Oh god I'm dead. Oh god, I'm dead. I'm pretty sure that was my initial thought. I thought I actually died, but you know, I didn't end up dying. I did end up seeing Sonica at the end, but it was not a good ending. But from playing through it, or. Er, well, from looking up stuff, uh, I found out actually the what determines the ending you get and everything, and I looked that up. But so most people get that crappy ending because that's like the neutral ending where you don't go any direction with Sonico, and so that's the most common ending that everyone gets, uh -huh. <laughs> which kind of sucks. Yeah, especially in the first playthrough because you have very little like control over which direction you go because you have very limited options. Oh, so you're it's it's a lot of trial and error then. Yeah. Okay. And then actually, once you beat the game, you unlock a shop uh, that you can spend the coins you get from doing every photography session to unlock different costumes, and also much more importantly, to the game is unlock the ability to see where all the endings lie mm -hmm. on like how you uh, uh, change Sonic's appearance and. I forget what the other one does, actually. Oh, it's uh, how all your items affect what the client wants for that photo shoot. So you have to try to balance those between getting the ending you want and not just completely ignoring what the customers want, or they'll come out of that. But, but yeah, also, I played through that. So, like, mm -hmm. we were in Vent <laughs> hanging out when he's playing this, and I'm talking to him, and he won't respond. So I thought, well, maybe there's a sound <laughs> problem. And he just goes, I'm really sorry, but I have to focus on this photo shoot. And I was like, oh my god, okay. <laughs> Welcome to the world of a dumb <laughs> he goes, He goes, damn it, Sonico, get out from around the table. I can't take your picture there. <laughs> uh, it, in my defense, too, my vent key was shift. And that in that game during the photo shoots, like it uh, moves your camera angle to like center on her. Which isn't always helpful when the photography like circle things you have to hit are like all around her and moving around and then I accidentally hit shift and it like jerks my camera away up there and then I'm I have to just try to like aim and move and I can't talk and it's like ah it's it's, it's intense it's an FPS <laughs> <laughs> that's literally when you start the game it has three difficulties it's like easy medium and hard and it's like easy if you've never played an FPS before. 
and the medium's like, if you're pretty good at FPS, and it's like, oh my god. So what you're saying is it's Sonny Kami Black Ops 2? Is that what we've determined here? Yep, basically. Aww. <laughs> Poor Sonny. Uh, I like that you're getting involved in it, though. I like that, you, you know what I mean? It's a different perspective from a different angle, and your excitement, it's like infectious. It's like, ener- it's like energizing. It's nice to see when other people get so like invested into games like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, and I forgot. Near the end of, well, end, sort of like midway through, you meet another character that ends up being Sonico's rival, who is just basically like an evil Sonico. It's like, it's like okay, Sonico is really innocent and pure, and this person is very like rude and vocal and outgoing, kind of like Sonico's very like quiet and and everything and like sonico is like really like pale skin pink hair the other person's like tan skin blonde same body proportions as sonico <laughs> she's basically the evil sonico in that game she's your rival but let me guess you wanted to make her waifu he wanted both of them oh now you're just being greedy <laughs> <laughs> It's like I wanted story. them all. In my defense, Sonico really liked her, and Sonico became really good friends with her. So, you know, I was just trying to be good, nice to Sonico. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's oh, how so it is. So and sure, Sonic. invite your friend over. It'll be okay. <laughs> Here, both of you guys drink more. I'll just hold the camera and take pictures of you in your bathing suit. Are you tired? You can sleep hey. in my bed. <laughs> My efforts just ended with me just getting lost, taking war photos in Afghanistan. <laughs> did not did not end well for me. Really? It's, it sounds like it's such a travesty <laughs> smashing. <laughs> no, it really so, was like he did he went to he went he gave up fashion photography and went to take war the, photos. <laughs> that's the ending. Wait, that's what? Funny. That's the ending. Yeah. Like that's seriously yeah, that's the, the WTF. <laughs> What the hell? That's the neutral ending. So don't try to get that one. Try to get anything but, like, the neutral ending. I'm almost half tempted to uh, buy this for Roger just to hear him rage. <laughs> I just him be like, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And I'd be like, well, so, worth it. I also played Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Yeah? And Tharja is Bay. Because mm-hmm. Tharja is awesome. And she sits behind a pillar and stares at you all the time. In the town. Or in the thing. Mm-hmm. She's great. Um, yeah, but yeah, I played Tokyo Mirage Sessions. I'm still only in like the third dungeon or something. But I'm enjoying the game a lot. I need to pick it up and play it actually. But <laughs> I'm enjoying it when I do. <laughs> um, I also got 7th Dragon 3 Code VFD. Same as Xan, I pretty much haven't played it since the demo. I do have it now, but I changed all my character's appearance to the models I wanted, and I will play that later sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get around to it. And, Thank you. <laughs> and into the next game that I also didn't find time to play very much, uh, Grand Kingdom. Someone very awesome got that for me for my birthday. Aww. And You're welcome. So, <laughs> I don't. I don't remember who it was though. They're actually they're probably just a loser. Or it's probably just sad. It's probably, just it's probably sad. sad. Yeah, but uh, I picked it up for some time today because I had time today actually because I got to leave work early to have my internet get shut down. Yay! <laughs> it's back on everything. They just had to rewire stuff. Oh, gotcha. But, but yeah, so I played Grand Kingdom because that didn't require the internet. And I enjoyed it a lot more than when I played the demo the first time. I had to replay like the demo intro thing, but played through that, did another chapter that chapter after that, and actually enjoyed it a lot more than when I first played the demo. Mm-hmm. The game's kind of like clicking better, and I'm understanding everything a little bit better. So. I'm gonna need you to help me with that because <laughs> I started it, and it's like, how would you describe the game? I like it's like, kind uh, of. Strategy uh, turn based, sort of like I, I was trying to think earlier, like, how would I describe this game? And I'm just like, I don't really know. Like, it's kind of, I'd say, it's sort of kind of like Fire Emblem ish, like, not, a, not at all the same, but sort of. <laughs> so, 
so like you have an energy it's, bar mm-hmm. and within that energy bar you have to move and once you so and it's also kind of like um uh Val, the the chronicles Valkyria. yeah or, so mm-hmm. you have like an energy bar and that's all you can do that's all you can move in. That's how far you can move in the turn. And mm-hmm. if you run out and you're not within range, then you can't do anything. So I'm thinking, Psh, I got this. I grabbed the archer and I don't know what happened, but now I'm sitting on top of the enemy and the <laughs> where I can shoot is off the screen. I'm like, well, this is not going to end well for me at <laughs> all. I didn't like the archers because the archers like... The two attacks they had is they have their basic shot, which is like they shoot it up and then it goes over everything and hits an area, but it hits an area like super far away. It's yeah. like half the length of the entire battlefield, which like once you start moving forward a bit, it's like, oh, I'm firing like a mile behind them because they're on the same screen as me. So it's not even close. Or they have like a straight line attack that like you have to move in front of anybody, like anyone on your side or have no one in that same lane because it's just a straight line that'll hurt your own units. Which is one thing I keep doing. I keep hitting my units. <laughs> Especially oh, yeah, with, like, there is friendly fire, which yeah. sucks. Oh, yeah, there's friendly fire, which sucks. Like, the mage has it. it. I hate it sometimes because, like, some skills don't properly show you. Like, it doesn't seem like it properly shows you how they hit. Yeah. Because it doesn't, like, correct it whenever it's like, oh, I'm having my healer standing here going to throw an acid bomb. Like, it looks like it throws up and over, like, in front of the person in front of them. No, they throw it right into the back of my own unit and blow them up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. That was, that was not I'm what like, I was aiming for. I think I fireballed, <laughs> like, my, my main oh, fire, yep. or my main fighter by <laughs> accident. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> yeah. I, I got a Lancer whenever I was playing it. Uh, and I could start making my own, like... Uh, picking my own units and everything. Got a Lancer. I didn't realize its basic attack is like stab, stab, and then a huge sweep that hits the adjacent lane. So I just like sliced my own units right next to him. <laughs> For like oh a ton God. of damage. Because hit, he hits like reasonably hard, reasonably hard, and then like super hard on that UJOE attack. And it's like, oh, okay, I just did 100 damage with my people's like 300 HP. <laughs> so brutal. basically it's all about placement. And we don't know that up front until you burn someone with acid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, I'm, like I said, though, I am enjoying it a lot more, though. It's There is, like, some depth to it, and it is pretty fun. Like, the story and characters are kind of, like, silly so far and everything. It looks nice. It's a nice-looking game. So do you think that, if since you're enjoying it a lot more now, do you think, like, the demo kind of prohibited you from getting to that level like do you think that it actually helped your it piqued your interest into the game or it actually hindered your interest in the game um see it's kind of weird because after i finished playing the demo i would say i probably wouldn't have wanted to pick up the game but already had ordered and everything mm-hmm. or saying already had it for me but since i started playing it like i'm glad i played the demo because it helped everything like now i'm playing through it again and everything it's like oh yeah i've played through this i've seen some of this stuff like i've thrown a bomb into my person's back before I know to watch out for that and not just suddenly be like, oh, God, I blew up my own person. <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like, since I've seen some of the bad stuff that I can do in this game, like to screw up, I know to avoid that in the demo and everything. And that makes the demo go a lot smoother. And I'm like, oh, that's actually pretty fun to play through when I'm not making stupid mistakes because I don't know how the game works. Right. So I would definitely say that it helped once I pick the game back up again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was what? nice. Yeah. Um... Fire Emblem Fates, I got a bond unit with Sand, and I leveled them up as a Noir Noble. Thank you. Because they're OP, OP. Yep. Um, her stats were really strong so far, and she's been leveling up super fast. I think she's like level like 15 or 16 as a Noble already. Oh, wow. Yeah, as an advanced class. Um, the only thing that's a bummer about the kids and everything is because they can't get support ranks with anyone... Not only, like, can't marry them to anyone or anything, but that also means when I pair them up with people, their stats that they give and that they get are, like, just crap, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Because they're based as though it was, like, a C-rank support. Because it's, like, pairing up my main unit with them, it gives them, like, plus five speed, plus three skill. Where I want to say, like, I might be thinking of Awakening in this, but people that are, like, S-rank pair up, advanced class, are normally, like, plus eight to like their best stat and like plus like 
five to another set, like plus like one or two across the board or something. But this was just like very mediocre snappers, so. And the thing that I really know. cared about when he told me that the Bond unit had, I was like, let her marry Daddy Xander. And he's like, <laughs> he, she, she, can't. she can't. I'm like, yes, she can. <laughs> she I can, can unofficially up. marry him. I can pair up with Daddy Xander and leave Daddy Xander single because he's not with anybody in my game. No one is married in my game except for Hayato and Nyx so that I could get Rajat as a child. So you can marry them. her. Yeah, so I could marry her, but I haven't actually married her. I've married no one. I'm just refusing to marry anyone <laughs> and just keep doing support ranks with people. And then also, for some reason, I married Leo and Azura together because I think I was planning on pairing people up. And then I was just like, nah, I'm just going to keep pairing random other people up. <laughs> oh, I was, so I was curious also. about that. I was wondering if you were going to... I keep checking in to see if you had like, <laughs> actually gone S rank with someone. You still have not I'm like... What is his holdup? Why does he have blue balls about this? What's going on? I think I have like, I'm trying to remember exactly. I have probably like eight characters that I'm up to A rank with that it's like it's flashing. Like, hey, you can get S rank with these people. Like, I know I have like Charlotte, Camilla, um, Rajat. You said those Felicia, out of order. Felicia the maid. Yeah, you, you did said those Camilla, out of Camilla, order. Camilla, Camilla, Camilla. And Rajat. Camilla, Rajat, Camilla, Effie. Camilla. Effie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say it's crazy. Felicia in there. <laughs> um, yeah, really. Why not Felicia? She's close. Well, she was because I paired up with her at the start of the game because you have like no units at the start of Revelations for like three chapters, and then it's like here's four units or five units every single chapter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they just flood you with people. Uh, yeah, I still haven't married anyone. Maybe eventually I will, but now I'm making another account with a main person named Krom. So that Krom can make a baby. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Very important. Uh, Priorities. And, yep. Then I played some WoW. I got my Druid up to 100. So I got all my classes up to level 100. GG. It's nice. Yeah. It only took about two and a half hours or so for us to get from 93 to 100. Yeah. With all the EXP potions and the ability to fly. <laughs> and heirlooms. Oh, yeah, and heirlooms, just all that stuff. And hopefully, since Mr. Legendary, a.k.a. Sab, has gotten beta access, uh, everyone else will get beta access soon. Or at least us. That's, that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> that's what matters. Yeah, so now we call Sab Mr. Legendary Beta. Because oh. he always gets legendaries in Hearthstone. But they're not good legendaries, but he gets them. <laughs> Hey, I hope he doesn't uh, listen to this episode. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, uh, that's it for me. Those are the games I've played. So what, what about, about you, you, Pizza? Oh, well, uh, me this week. Um, I have a dog barking. I apologize if you guys can hear that. But I have been playing Pokemon Go. The night it came out, we played it. And the thing is, is that it's no longer just a single, like, person game. My family has gotten so involved. These last few nights this week, we've literally gone out after dinner, driving around, picking up Pokemon. I'm proud to say that in my arsenal, because the area that I'm surrounded in <clears throat> is a very heavily forested area. There's, I mean, there's barely any street lights, no sidewalks. It's very rural. And um, we have tons of Eevees and tons of Weedles around here and Caterpies. So um, the first evolution I did was my Eevee to bring her up to Flareon. And since then, I've picked up Nidorina. I've picked up Kakuna. Uh, just last night, I finally picked up my first Pikachu. Good job. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm a Pika. I don't know what to name him yet. And then um, we have a lot of... Uh, Clefairies around here for some reason. Clefairies and Jigglypuffs, but they only come out at night. And my nephew's adorable because he's 19 years old and he can't pronounce things for shit. So he keeps calling it Cliffery. So <laughs> I had to rename mine. I'm like, all right, I'm naming this guy Cliffery. He's like, don't do it. I was like, too late. But hey, um, Did, did huh. you know you can get Pikachu as a starter, apparently? What? Yes. I you, it, it's basically... <laughs> What you have to do, it's a secret, like, it's like a secret, like a backdoor way to get him, is you have to avoid picking up your first three starter Pokemon. And if you avoid them, like, a multiple number of times, you can end up going after Pikachu. And you can make Pikachu your starter. Oh. 
Yeah. It's if you also implement um I don't know if you guys are familiar with the circle tactic where you kind of circle the ball around so that it has a little bit of a angle. It's better on the aim when you finally uh, are targeting your Pokemon, especially if you have a little bit of a slight like lean to when you th uh, fling your Pokemon or flick them with your finger. So there's a lot of little like secrets and stuff. Like I didn't know about the pulsing to realize how close I was to a Pokemon. I didn't realize mm -hmm. the color things until fairly recently. But I did win a gym battle when I was at Newark Airport uh, with a guy. <laughs> it was really funny. He was a, an actual employee of Newark Airport. And I ousted him with his, what was it, Electrobuzz? Or maybe it was his Abra? I don't remember. And I think he actually evolved into a Kadabra. And I, I beat him with a Jigglypuff, and it was like a small Jigglypuff, but I beat him. And literally, we saw each other in the airport, and he saw me in my phone. He's like, pizza made. I'm like, Nicarama 29. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I just glared at each other and started laughing profusely. It was great. I had a good laugh. But I like that it's engaging all walks of life, and it's so family-friendly. Like, Literally, my family drove around for two hours yesterday. We all caught a Growlithe together. All of us got a Growlithe, and we're all singing and cheering in the car. I like that it's kind of bringing us closer together, and everyone's playing, literally everyone. And my nephew and his girlfriend have been out like 2, 3 a.m. every night this week just picking up Pokemon after work. I was like, you guys are dedicated. I love it. So I've been playing a lot of Pokemon and I've been playing tons of Fire Emblem Fates. All of my all of my characters and support units are matched up. Um, they are all S ranked. I finally got Rajat, who I'm gonna be honest, slightly afraid of her. It's a little bit, a little creeped out uh, by her. She's awesome. So am I. That's why I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Low creep down. Asugi though is probably my favorite. Like if there was if I had known that I could like romance Asugi, I think I might have. I think Asugi is the cutest. I love him to death. I'm like, oh, I'm going to pair you up with Rajat because you guys are going to be amazing. To or No. Yeah, I paired him up with Rajat. That's who I did. And they're just the cutest, funniest couple. Their support conversations, adorable. Absolutely love it. Um, aside from that, though, I've been leveling up uh, Rue. She's level 85 uh, Hoshido Noble. And then this past weekend... Um, I don't know. I I didn't tell a lot of people. I kept it to myself. But um, I was e pregnant, and I was expecting. <laughs> he scared the crap out of me for a second. <laughs> I was like, "What is that? What does that mean?" I thought we were friends. You should have told me. <laughs> well, you're the father. You should know. You should know. <laughs> so it was. I what day was it that we were going back and forth and chatting? I think we were chatting in text on like. Sunday or Saturday, and and Sushi texts me. She goes, "Hey, we should make a baby uh, bond unit together." And I'm like, "Oh my god, I wasn't expecting this. This is so sudden. I don't, I don't know what to do." But I was super excited. I'm like, "Yeah, let's let's make a let's make an e baby together." And the first thing I did was text Sam. I'm like, "Sam, I'm pregnant." He's like, "What?" And I'm like, "No, no, no, <laughs> not really. E, e pregnant. I'm gonna get e knocked up." He goes. I'm not quite following you. Can you break this down for me? I'm like, <laughs> me and Sushi are going to make a baby. He goes, wait a minute. I know you're a girl. <laughs> Is there something I don't know? I'm like, no, Sushi's a girl too. We're going to make a baby together. He goes, you're talking about a video game. That's what it, you have to be clearly talking about a video game. I'm like, yeah, me and Sushi are making an e-baby in Fire Emblem. He goes, you should have just started the whole conversation with me and Sushi are making a Bond unit in Fire Emblem. I'm like, it's a lot funnier when I tell you I'm pregnant and see what you <laughs> So I think it was literally a day, mm -hmm. maybe two days, and my little my little girl came into this world, my lovely Umeko. She's adorable. She looks just like her mother, the other mother, and she has cute little marks on her face. And her name actually means, I think, beautiful plum blossom or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Which is awesome because she's like a little baby heroine of the cherry blossom. She's a little heroine of the plum blossom. She's adorable and she was actually a troubadour. So I had to level her up to 10 and then I really quickly switched her over to a maid and now she's just fucking killing people with her hairpins and just going to town. I absolutely love her. I'm proud she's of adorable. her. 
Yeah. yeah. Princess Nanako um, is very fertile. Um, yeah. She has two bond units with Sab, who doesn't really play the game, but I go and visit his castle. Um, Smashy, and then you, and I'm working on Ovada right now. <laughs> yes, I'm working on Ovada too, and I'm working on Smashy also. Um, I'm, I don't know if Smashy knows, but when he's asleep at night, he's slipping oh, into God. his castle <laughs> and taking his e-eggs. No. Well, you know what? He's not married, so it's fine. <laughs> exactly. It's not like he has a commitment. He's a commitment fool, so... He's just a really good e-sperm donor. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get a baby from you soon, whether you like it or not. I'm going to get a baby from you. I actually got one from a random person, too. In oh, the my game. God. From someone named Cat. We made a beautiful son named Katsuo. He's adorable. And he's a fucking great Vanguard. I, I changed him to a Vanguard because I had my one Vanguard brand that I didn't know what to do with it. So I was like, I'm going to turn you into a Vanguard. And he is the shit. So I've been doing that. Uh, leveling Rue to 99. I'm trying to now work on the rest of the support ranks. And then I'm kind of at a crossroads because I've been putting like a check mark to do list together and I'm about 40% of the way. So I'm like, do I start working on one of the other saves? Do I switch over to Revelations? But I have this real like. I feel like I'm abandoning my birthright main unit, or my unit, going to like a Revelations one, but I really want to see the Revelations story, so I don't know what to do. I'm torn. I really want to try Revelations because I want to see that story really, really bad. Conquest, I got to see through Ovada's Let's Plays, and I, I thought the story was great, but I was like, okay, I don't really feel the need to purchase the game. I just want to, I, I would just rather just pick up Revelations. So. I'm torn. I don't have to do it. says more husbandos. Yeah, you get everybody. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I, twice as many people. It's really weird, too, because the one person that I'm really intrigued of picking up, which, by the way, isn't Jacob. Don't tell my husband that. But I really want to, I think I want to pair up with either Subaki or Laszlo. Laszlo has got some weird, intriguing thing about him that I think is cute as fuck. And I'm like, I like him. I don't know why, but I like him. So um, we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll pick it up soon. But I'm afraid that if I do, I'll never see my boyfriend again because I'll probably forget that I have a boyfriend, forget I have a family, forget I have a life. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, aside from that, I've been playing uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I backed the Kickstarter as a present for Smodian, so I got the demo on Steam, and it's actually a lot of fun. All you Castlevania fans, check it out. Um, on the phone, I've been playing, aside from Pokemon Go, uh, Samurai Love Ballad Party, which is a Voltage mobile Atome game. Really enjoying it. There's a guy there that wears a, a wolf mask, and he's like the tuxedo mask of, of ninjas. I immediately jumped on him. I was like, I'm going to wipe the shit out of you. Yeah. I'm going to love on you. I've been playing that, and then I also just picked up 10 Billion Husbands, which is a stupid addictive game and it's probably draining my phone. Um, I don't know. Have you guys ever played Cookie Counter? No. Or cookie Clicker? Or cookie Clicker, that's uh, it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I have no idea what you are talking about. <laughs> I, I love Cookie Clicker. I was playing Cookie Clicker a lot as well as um, the other game that's just like that, the fighting, the hero one. Or you could pick up different heroes. It's basically just a click counter game, but you pick up different husbands and you just start marrying. Your the goal is to get up to ten million husbands, and it's it's stupid anime bullshit, but I love it. And I want to I wanted to play it, so I've been playing that in my free time too. But that's like just something to like you know touch, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that, and then of course I tried the VF uh, the VFD demo as well. Um, I played a god hand, and she was awesome. Um, I'm still up in the air as to whether I'm going to buy the game, but I wanted to keep my demo save just in case so I could just transfer her over. Yeah. Because my god hand was super cute, and I was like, oh, you're fun. It's very much like Persona, and I liked it a lot. Like, I liked it for that reason. So, we'll see. I, I was a little nervous about fighting the dragons, but mm -hmm. I could beat them. I could kick their ass. Yeah, so I was playing it ahead of Smashy. And I was like, oh, I just beat up a dragon, yay. And then I was like, 
<laughs> oh, I just beat up another dragon. I'm a little nervous. Oh my god, I barely did it. And then you go outside at the last dragon. I'm like, fuck this. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> no. And he's like, oh god. So he thought the first dragon was the last dragon. So he was like, he looks cute. He's just bouncing around. I'm like, he's not cute. He's gonna burn your face. <laughs> He's really gonna burn your face. <laughs> it was it was really funny, and then he figured out. I was like, I'm not talking about. That's just the first one. There's more. Yes, there is. <laughs> yes, there is. It's a really fun game, though. I have to say, I have to give props to Atlas. I think they did a really good job with the game. I enjoyed it very, very much, and I'd like to thank them for introducing maids more into the world of anime weeb. Um, we need more meads in this world, so thank you for giving us that opportunity. I'll probably pick up the game eventually. I'm just, I'm still on my fire and one fates kick, and I haven't gotten out of it. It's yeah. been, it's been months now, so I've been doing that. And then I've been playing a little bit of Lords of Magna too. I'm literally one chapter mm -hmm. away from getting my Fran. We're getting there. We're getting there. Unfortunately, Fire Emblem Fates got in my way after me and Sushi had a baby. I had to take care of the kid. You know how that goes. No sleep. Constant crying. The usual. But um, that's what I've been up to this week. There's a lot of games. There's a lot of gaming going on. And I just live vicariously through you guys playing Tokyo Mirage Sessions because I don't have a Wii and I can't play. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> I want to play. I do. I really want to play. And I want that girl with the short blue hair that's fucking adorable, but I don't know who she... Uh, Eleonora? Is that her name? Blonde hair or blue hair? Uh, she's blue-haired when she goes into her magical... She's... Um, her yeah, that's Eleonora. Her mirage is... Um, what's his name from Awakening? Virian. Yeah. Yeah, Virian. Yeah. So... Oh, shit! That was the other thing. I've been playing Fire Emblem Awakening. I made a ruin there. I'm trying to make her a Pegasus Knight. Not going as well as planned, so we have a ways to go. But I've been playing that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. Awakening is great. I'm still a huge Krom fan, and him being in Tokyo Mirage Sessions is wonderful as well. He's like yeah. the main Mirage you get, so I'm very happy about that. Oh man, he's a dreamboat. I mm -hmm. love him. I, uh, I just want to do Unforgivable Acts to him. I do love him. I'm working on my S rank for him. I don't want him to be with anybody else but me. And even, uh, who was it, Sumia? She was getting close, and I was like, oh, I really like you because you're a Pegasus Knight. But back up off man in my save. Still. Yeah, I think once I was able to marry him, I liked all the, the competition. Yeah. But up until that point, I was, like, elbowing people. <laughs> like, I was, like, throwing, like... Uh, what is it called? Like a reeking box out. I was like, we're not progressing this story until his ass is mine. Like you guys are all just, we're grinding levels and we're grinding S ranks. And then it was like, oh, look, we're married. Now let's play the story. Like <laughs> you have to have priorities. Like That's, that's see, fine. That's fine. See, I've always seen Sumia's character from how you see it, like later and from some of the other characters and everything. Is Sumia is more like the childhood friend with Krom, but like without any sort of like, uh, like, uh, romance thing. Just purely just we're childhood friends. We, or not, not even if they're really childhood friends, but like they're kind of like we're friends. We do shit. We screw around and punch each other in the shoulder. <laughs> each other I, in the face. I initially thought that until. She ended up saving him, and he gave her that really long stare. I was oh like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I was like, no. <laughs> "I was, so I was like, mad. no, yeah, you, you were too, you were too." See? I was like, "No, I just saved you. I just say I'm your strategist. I'm the one that saves all of our asses." She just flew mm -hmm. in on a fucking horse. The horse did it. Yeah, I'm gonna look at anyone like that. Look at the fucking horse. Don't look at her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank. Preach, sushi. Preach. Tell it like it is, because that's the same way I felt. I was like, I know you're not fucking looking at her like that. Take a picture. It'll last longer. Hey, you're so, the strategist. You know, it's not your fault if the Pegasus Rider accidentally flies into all the archers and just. She's uh, she and literally, I called her a clumsy bitch at least like three times. I was like, this clumsy bitch needs to move. She needs to go. Needs to go. I'm here, Crom. 
and Gaius up like crazy. I love them. They're my Yaoi, like above all others in that game. And they're they're perfect together. And there is there is a um there's a manga you can purchase on eBay that's Gaius and Robin. Like Robin is like main the, unit. Yeah, the main unit. And it's really it's drawn really, really pretty. And I want it so bad, but it's like ninety dollars. I'm like, I don't want to spend ninety dollars on Yaoi. Can someone just scan that shit in? Like, please <laughs> help a sister out. Like, I'll donate twenty five dollars, but I'm not spending ninety dollars. But Gaius is um, what you might call it in um, a sugi. Yeah, Gaius is a sugi in Fates. <gasps> really? Mm -hmm. Oh shit! And his. So, and I paired him up with Olivia, who I love. And don't call her a stripper smash. She, she's a dancer. Don't <laughs> call her that. She dances and sparkles come from her and cherry blossoms and she has pink hair. I love her. She's so sweet. And I paired them together. And it's kind of really risque because they talk about pies and sweets and how he likes feeding her <laughs> all of his pies and she likes eating all of his stuff. And I'm just, like, snickering to myself like a 12-year-old because I'm like, I love you guys. I'm going to make you guys get married. Don't worry. I'm looking out for you. <laughs> You're doing it right. You're doing it right. See, um, I like Olivia because she's the backup dancer in a or in a Tharja's dancing troupe. <laughs> I was unaware of this. But, um, it, it's a joke. No one else will get ha uh -huh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> nice clapping there. Uh. <laughs> anyway. Like the beach DLC, <laughs> but yeah, no, the more you get into Awakening, we can, we'll talk about it more. But yeah, yeah, I haven't, I, I have to say I was, I, okay, I, we're going to have to do another Fire Emblem podcast, but, um, so I thought I was a proud parent in Fates. I have never been more proud to be a mother until Awakening. Like, Morgan? Lucina. Oh, Luc oh Lucina. Oh. Like, I like I tear up. Like, what I wish what they had done in those scenes, they could have done in um, Fates. Because, Smash, you correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe I'm just mm -hmm. a Crom fangirl, but... They were so sweet and like you felt like a parent like you were so proud of her and like just they had these really sweet family moments not like kind of corny silly stuff and not like like they were acted out like they were animated like in the uh in the scene where you meet lucina right well don't ruin it but but, but yeah. the scene where that's what you're talking about right well there, I the thought actual, there was like, a couple animated? points but yeah are there I don't know. All I'm yeah. saying is, all I'm saying is, because I don't want to spoil nice. it for pizza, is that if you think you're proud of your of, of your children now, when you play Awakening, you will be like, who said some shit about my kid? And you will drive and fly somewhere and beat someone's <laughs> face in on the internet because she's perfect. That's oh, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm going to love on her. She's great. See, and that's why that's why I married her. <laughs> still trying to kiss ass. You still sold my sister out. Yeah, you really hey, did. You really I did. I married your daughter. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh, their their supports are very interesting, just from the story perspective. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. Not gonna say any more than that. What? Yeah, I think you better stop. Oh. Okay, so I, I do have to say this, and this is the so very cool. reason that we need to have another Fire Emblem episode. Maybe we'll even do this on the Nanako Chronicles, because guys, if you don't know, Heroines of the Cherry Blossom now has another awesome podcast to join into the ranks that you guys should all listen to. If you are more of the JRPG lead, you guys should definitely check out Smashy and Sushi's podcast, Nanako Chronicles. Amazing. Amazing. Thanks. And that's all I have to say about that because, <laughs> honestly, I still need to catch up on episodes. I haven't listened to the Tokyo Mirage sessions, sessions yet because 
I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be salty about it because I'm gonna be like, I wanna play. Guys, let me play with you too. Take pictures. But, um. I will <clears> say <throat> the TMS session is spoiler free. Um, but the first episode with Valhalla may not be spoiler free. Okay. So. Okay. That's all good. That is all good by me. But yeah, honestly, absolutely amazing. So I'm pretty excited. You guys should check it out. You guys should plug it too. I'm gonna plug it at the end of this episode too. <laughs> but we said we going back to the actual focus. The my main goal right now in playing Fire Emblem Awakening, I want the role of bride because I didn't know that that was a DLC class that you could play. I want to be a bride in Awakening, so that's my goal right now. I want to say they're like the best mages. They have stupid high magic, but I could be thinking of the wrong game that has brides as the most broken mages. Oh, it looks so awesome because I was literally looking at it and I'm like, I want to play this. I want to be a mate. I want to be a bride. So that's my goal now is to just be able to level up fast enough so I can be a bride. That's the goal. <laughs> but um, okay, we have to actually okay. Back on track, but I was really we're gonna have another fire episode very soon. I just need to play I need to play Revolutions. <laughs> but um the purpose for this episode was we wanted to talk about something that was actually brought to us by a viewer who had asked about Atome writing guides. And it was a really good question because I guess we touched on it, but we never really got in depth about writing guides and they wanted to know how do you even go about writing guides where do you even start and where do you even begin and I would say it's really to the personal preference of the player as to how you want to write your guide and how you want to compile it and put it together I'm a complete clusterfuck and I'll be the first to admit it I am all trial and error and that's why guides for me take at least weeks to do Whereas there are some people like Sushi who has it very organized, very, you know, you know, collected sample data and it's broken down really, really crisp and concise so that you can understand and it's really, it translates well to anybody who wants to, to read or follow the guide. So we have different methodologies about how we do it. So I'm going to, you know, open the table up to everybody and talk about, you know, what is guide writing for you? How do you go about it? Where do you even begin? Oh, oh, pick Smashy. Pick me. Well, yeah, I was going to say, so, Smashy mm -hmm. took this as a challenge this week, and I was really proud of him. So I look forward to seeing what he has to say first. So what I did for this, because I haven't, I've never written a guide or anything before, is I figured I would at least write something up for myself as just like a personal walkthrough thing for is though I was writing up a guide sort of for Sonic Kami yay <laughs> and so first off it was it was a lot more like just work than I was expecting and everything because <laughs> it's like okay gotta go through the day and then have to go through the day multiple times because there's multiple different questions that could ask throughout the day you need to find okay which one of these is giving me the best results how can I like optimize this to max out the affection gain for the game ah, gain for the day and what was actually beneficial is every choice you make after you make it if you did if you picked a good answer sonica will have like hearts appear next to her head mm -hmm. so at least i got instant feedback so i could see oh i picked this that made her happy that's good that's the right choice so at least that helped making it a little bit easier but there were a few things that are just kind of tedious, at least in this game, because uh, the dialogue options could either change, like they could change, like depending on different things that happens throughout the day. Like there were scenes where you have to look at Sonico, and depending on where you look, like it might change the next bit of dialogue a little bit, so you have different choices. Like, uh, like at the beginning of the game, you meet her; she's nervous and everything, and if you look at her face, you see that oh. Like, she's shaking a little bit. She must be nervous. You have the dialogue option in the next thing where you're like, hey, you seem kind of nervous. You should try to relax a bit. And hey, that's one that she likes. So if you pick, like, to look at the right thing, you unlock the proper dialogue choice. So that was kind of neat. Mm -hmm. And that helped with this. And, uh... oh, the other thing I <laughs> learned is to never, ever look or try to touch her headphones 
when you have the look or touch options because the game just like everything like goes back black and it like flashes lightning it's like no do not do that it's just like i have a feeling something terrible is about to happen if i try to mention her headphones i don't think i should do that i don't think i should touch her like why like are they permanently attached to her body or something or don't say do not question (laughs) wait what she's always wearing her headphones like but does she wear them in the shower you don't you never see her shower so she doesn't shower you don't watch her when do you you don't watch her shower i'm just i'm just curious i was just curious i just wanted to know i think you get like you get like the blurred like air quotes like blurred looking through glass kind of thing from anime when she's in the shower, but I think I don't know if you can see her headphones in those or not. So actually, I'm not sure. But it's one of those things where like every scene that she's in, everything like she's waking up from bed, headphones are still on, everything like they're always on. So the game doesn't want. Them. So the game's just like don't look or touch them, don't mention them. <laughs> but uh, I'll say like overall, I only got a few of the days in. Um, like actually writing out all the options and writing out solutions to them and everything like what gives the best answers but overall it was like it was really nice like it feels really rewarding doing that because afterwards like I know like next time I go to play through the game and I need to like make a choice and everything I know I have all these written down I don't have to be like oh was I supposed to choose this one or that one during this dialogue scene am I supposed to just wait and say nothing is that what actually makes her happy or something I know, it's just, okay, I'm at this day, these are the dialogue options, pick that, pick that, pick that, boom, max out affection. Mm-hmm. But that was what I did. I wrote up stuff like that. How yeah. many How many endings? You, you got two extra ones, right? I got two of the endings, and there's about 18 of them, I, I said. Maybe 21, I can't remember exactly, but there's a lot of endings. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. I got two of them, though. And one was, like, kind of happy. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's not It's not the happy I was going for, but I don't end up dying. So, honestly, it's it's happier than it could have been. You know? who, who knew Sonny Kami was, like, amnesia? <laughs> That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> you get to the point where you're just like, fuck it. I'm alive. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was funny because Smash he looked at the show notes and he's like, "I've never made a guide." I was like, "Well, you kind of have an Atome game, even though it's not an Atome game." Like, yeah, just give it a shot. So I was curious as to your thoughts on it. And and you're very calculated. And I mean, I think that's that's the important thing. Like, as an aside from Smashy's guide, the the thing is is that everybody thinks about guide writing and how they plan their playthrough in a very methodical, very calculated way. So I think the way you went about it was the very logical, the logical route. And it obviously you just wanted the safe end result. You obviously want the best case scenario, but you'll take the safe result. And I think you did that like very smooth and very fluidly. So I commend you, Smashy. I think that's awesome. Mm. I think that's really, really Mm. cool. See, you are a lot better about it than I am because I am a old school pen and paper guide writer. That is how I am. That's how I've been. Um, for myself, the first thing that I have to acknowledge, because if not, I just can't even play the Atome, is that my first blind run, my first playthrough is going to immediately be a bad bad ending. Like you have to go in with the mentality of knowing I'm going to fuck this up horribly. Yeah. And especially when playing a game like Amnesia, I had to go in there knowing I'm going to die. I'm going to die that first run through, but at least I tried it. And honestly, the way I go about guide writing is um, I keep a pen and paper handy, whether I'm playing on my laptop or I'm playing on my phone. I get comfortable. I make sure I have some coffee next to me. And I can go and start guide writing for about two to three hours at a time before I start getting fidgety. I'm like, all right, I got to call it quits. But um, I go through all the options. Um, I basically just jot down keywords from each option available, and I let instinct take over. I go, you know what? This is ideally what I think I would do as the protagonist. And I write that down, and I kind of put a star next to it, and I'm like, okay, let's go. And you know, I 
run through the game, you know, to the best of my ability. And of course, the first run through for me is always the longest because I want to enjoy the story. I want to understand what's going on in the story. I want to feel the emotions of the story. And whatever end result I get, you know, you can, the way Atome's had it, and this is obviously a, a smidge different from Sonny Kami, is that the way that they word certain things at the end, they let you know if you got the really, really good ending, the really, really bad ending, or the normal ending. So when that end result is presented to you, I get to that point where I'm like, okay. Now I go back, I look through everything that I wrote, and I think to myself, self, is there anything that I had a slight bit of hesitation, a slight bit of doubt, where do I make those changes? And basically it becomes a game of trial and error for me. And this is the reason why I write guides solely for myself and I don't write it for other people because by the time the game, like, you know, from the time that the game's released, it could take me anywhere from three weeks to a month before I have just one route done. Um, but I also, I'm very mathematical about my choices. Um, I usually go in looking at the available options. Like if I see that there's five guides available and there's three possible routes, I start doing the math going, okay, well, there's 15 results that I have to get. How long is this going to take me? What do I want to do first? And how do I want to tackle this? Do I really want to get into it or do I just want to enjoy the story? But for myself, it's definitely, um, <clears throat> it's a lot about trial and error. And that's just because I try not to put pressure on myself specifically when playing Atomes. I like to just enjoy it for the sake of enjoying the game. And that's the reason why you've never seen a guide for me ever released online. Unless, you know, I find the perfect Atome and the perfect guide that I want to post it about. I probably would have done it for War of Prayers, but I just, I never got around to it. But, um, yeah, I literally sit down. When I finally see that I'm starting to go into the right direction, it gets me excited because I start figuring out the dichotomy and, and the character trope of the person I'm going for. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, as I keep, you know, making mistakes and also keep making, you know, choices of luck, that's when I start realizing what the character, the route that I'm going after is like. And that's when I realize that, you know, this is this type of person. I have to be sweet to him or, okay, this is this type of person. I have to be an asshole to him. And that's just kind of how I figure it out. And then it's it's very completionist OCD in a sense, if that makes any sense. But that's that's how I write guides. It's literally sitting down, writing out the choices, and then seeing which ones I liked. If there's a, a choice or a decision that I feel very strongly about, I'll highlight it. And I, I might highlight it pink for love, or if I think it sucks, I'll highlight it yellow for urine. Like, it's, it's all, you know. Mm-hmm. A little bit of a theory, but that's that's how I do it. I would I would probably be easier doing it on the computer, but I, constantly keeping my eyes fixated on the computer just kind of gets me a little drowsy. So mm -hmm. I've tried numerous times to write guides on the computer, and I just I can't get around to doing it. I'll find myself get distracted. So pen and paper is the way I go. So what about you, Sushi? Um, I use uh, Excel. Uh it's funny, two years ago, I got a new job, and they had me work in Excel, and I hated Excel, and I actually left the job because of Excel, and now I love Excel. <laughs> um, really? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Obey um, Excel. Yeah. I use it for everything. <laughs> um, my advice would be, well, and how, okay, so how I do it is, it depends upon the game. But if you're looking to start to do one, I would encourage not to do a mobile one first, maybe. Um, try one, because I can't, it's been a while since I've played a mobile. I like to play, I like, I started out with ones that had like multiple save spots, you know? So like, Men of Yoshiwara, for example. Um is a good one, right? Because you're on the computer, you can have Excel up if that's what you like, or pen and paper, you know, whatever. And you can, most Atome games have a gauge, right? For how much affection is won. And I wrote this down today at lunch and I'm trying to figure out a way of explaining it. So you figure out the highest percentage you can get from an answer. So the one I could remember was the last one I worked on, which was Men of Yoshiwara 2. So I'm going to talk about 
that one because I don't remember my older stuff that well. Um, you find out the highest percentage that you can get when answering something. So you want to save, obviously, before you feel like something's coming up, like a, a selection. And then just go through and choose. And then you can check the affection meter. And I think for many of you, you were too, the highest you could get was like 5%. So I knew if I went from like 1% happy to 5% happy, I got the max. So I would just write down what the answer was. Um, sometimes you might get like a 3%. Well, that's the middle ground answer, obviously. And then I remember one time I was in Vent with Smashy doing one. And I was like, I don't know what to pick here. And he's like, I'll just pick this one. And word to the wise, never go to Smashy for a Tomei Always advice. Always go to Smashy for love and <laughs> Don't. He's Always. terrible. He's <laughs> terrible at it. Everyone he told me to pick was like the worst possible answer that you, like, they hated me. Like, if they could give me negative percentage, they would have. Like, it was just bad <laughs> choices. And um, so that's kind of. And you're blaming me. <laughs> that's kind of how I like make it but then I also kind of do like what you've talked about pizzas I do a lot of research on the story and the characters so most games will give you a background of the character and they give you a little slice into their personality right but there's still like a little mysterious thing there mm -hmm. so you take that and you apply it to the story and I don't necessarily treat it as what I would say, like, if I know I'm making a guide, I try to win. You know, like, I don't, like, you enjoy playing it through the first time, you know, and get the full experience. Me, when I go to make a guide on my first attempt, I don't really get that same kind of enjoyment. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear it. Because I'm just like, okay, well, I kind of remove myself, which isn't good because you should play the game because you want to play the game. Um, and you should totally, like, lose yourself in it. Um, but I will just be like, okay, well, if I'm this kind of protagonist, and he's this kind of guy, and it's this kind of story, and these are my selections, what do I think she would say? And kind of go from there. Um, but I love using Excel. It keeps me organized. I have each, each end has a column. And so I can keep track. So I can quickly have everything in one spreadsheet that says, okay, well, the good ending, I said this. The normal ending, I said this. And then the bad ending is either the same thing as normal or totally different. So sometimes you might have like a similar choice with the normal. Um, I don't know, but I, it's hard to put it into words. It's like one of those things you just kind of have to show I guess um, mm -hmm. but I save a lot and I save in a lot of different spots and you have to have patience to go back through again if you've screwed it up and you didn't save it properly um, the one great thing that everyone probably knows about Atome games now is that once you beat it the first time you can fast forward the dialogue mm -hmm. the second time mm -hmm. and other playthroughs so that makes it even easier um, to make your guide and work on it and practice it. Um, but I would, from my point of view, start out with something that's either on the Vita or on the PC. Pizza, I can't remember because I literally had, the last mobile game I played was that Butler one. Do they do they automatically save, or can you? Uh, you can actually, if I'm not mistaken, it, it really okay. This, now here, here's where it gets a little technical because I think I, I'm, I'm more of a predominant Shall We Date player than mm -hmm. I am a Voltage player. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not mistaken, in Shall We Date, uh, the Shall We Date Atomes, you have like a bookmark that you can p apply and you can hold on to it there and go through it. And then after you finish your first playthrough, the fast forward is a very fast, fast forward. You can finish an entire mobile Atome for Shall We Date one route would take you about an hour, hour 15, um, just on regular playthrough. And then on fast forward, you could probably cut it down to about 40 to 45 minutes if you really tried. So you can do the bookmarks there. And they, 
like you said also, you know when you're coming up to uh, when you're potentially coming up to a choice of decision. So you can go and you can just make that auto sleeve there just before you go and you choose it. So. And it's obviously a lot easier on games that you actually actually purchase, not the ones where like um, it's time um, prohibited. Because mm-hmm. um, clearly, you know that those are going to be a little bit harder, and you'll have checkpoints, and you have to have a certain amount of items and all that stuff. So, um, I would just say, like, I think guide making guides are really fun, but you have to have a lot of patience. And realize that until you find your groove, they're going to be, like Smash, he said, it's a lot more difficult than he realized. Um, but I think it's fun. I know there's a ton of guides online and on Tumblr and and everything. So I think that a lot of people really like doing them. And I think, well, I don't know how to say this, but I think working on a guide will unlock more things to you in the game that maybe you didn't notice or you didn't think about. Mm -hmm. Um, Like for Smashy, when he was making it, he discovered certain parts that he hadn't thought about. Same with me. When I make guides, I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that was an option or that this unlocked that. or You know, so you learn more about the game and therefore you get better you know, not only playing the game, but also making guides, you know, in the future. Yeah. Yep. And and I think another important note to make for those um, who who want to start guide writing, I encourage everybody to try it because it seems at first like it's a very daunting task. Believe me when I say that I've been intimidated numerous times by people who have written guides on routes about three days after a game has launched, whether it be mobile (laughs) or a Vita-based one. I'm like, how? How did did you not sleep? But don't don't ever feel discouraged that you can or cannot guide right because there is no one affixed way as to how to go about it. Everybody has different tactics and different maneuvers as to how they go about it. Again, I mean... Sushi brought up a great point. Compatibility, you know, you do see that there is a bit of a gauge where you know that one choice will predominantly push you towards, you know, the better ending and one that won't give you any points at all. That's not something that I've ever even noticed in a game. But it, once I hear her talk about it, I'm like, oh, that's right. That's exactly right. So we kind of feed off of each other and brainstorm off of each other, too. So if you if you're considering going into guide writing find a method that works best for you and also remember that these things could be done in a very quick manner or these are things that could take time so it's it's all about how you feel comfort wise about going about it and I think too that I mean one thing that especially like before I mentioned um, my Excel spreadsheet for Fire Emblem um, Sometimes I have more fun messing around in my spreadsheet with the game and pairing people up or remembering what I did and seeing my next goal, that that's almost as fun as playing the game itself to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that I think guides can be that fun too. So it can add not only more to the game as far as you unlocking features, but you might really get excited about guides and Going back to what you said, Pizza, don't get intimidated. There's a million guides out there for amnesia. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it. If you want to make it, make it. If you want to post it, post it. Like, be proud of what you do. There will be random people that find your guide. There will be random people that find 10 other guides for whatever game that's out. Mm-hmm. But if you like it... So don't forget to save. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> don't forget to. But, like, I think that making a guy can, for some people, make the game even um, better personally and even more exciting and kind of maybe help you plan out your next steps. And there, understand as well that there is no cookie cutter guide. There is no one guide to rule them all because when you think about the actual calculations as to like what percentage it takes upon answering a question, some people may have reached the best ending at a minimum level, mm-hmm. like uh, of it. Like it, um, I'm trying to think of how to best express this verbally. Like getting like a D, you know, it, it, on a that, scale of A to F, but. It, 
but still getting the best possible ending. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if you're basing an ending with 100% compatibility, they got the best possible ending, but it was 90%. It may not have been 99%, 98%. You know what I'm saying? It there everybody when they write guides, it actually has different results for different people. So, I mean, obviously not different results in the end result, but I mean, they can still achieve, uh, achieve the best possible scenario and ending and only have gotten 90% compatibility as opposed to 100. So if you see that there's a guide, I, a guide out there that you're kind of hesitant on and you want to try to, you know, reconnoiter and make one your own, go for it. Definitely do it. So yeah, don't be discouraged about it. That's a good point. And also, if you're ever curious, check your CGs. They yep. will tell you how much you have left, what maybe you might have missed. And also remember, just because they're not there doesn't mean they're not in another route sometimes. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple, multiple layers that if you're like me and you're kind of becoming a, an Excel freak, um, <laughs> you can track how many CGs you have. You can mm -hmm. track, you know, all this stuff. So you open up your spreadsheet, you got, you know, a, you have, the good route, the normal route, the bad route, number of CGs that you have unlocked, maybe number of voice acting, maybe number of CGs from the mini games, you know, whatever. You mm -hmm. can make it as simple and as beautiful as you want and as complex um, as you want as well. Yep. That's actually a really, really good point that I didn't think of. I, I have a very bad completionist problem as a gamer in general. I can't move on to other games until I complete one to its like maximum potential, which is the reason why having a PS Vita and trophies is just a time killer for me. But when you play games like Code Realize or when you even play games like Men of Yoshiwara, I can track my progress based on the CGs that I've unlocked. So I do agree with that. That is a very good indicator to let you know what you've done, what you've missed. And it even gives you a good idea as to what portion of the gameplay you might have actually missed it. Because if you're playing a 16 chapter Atome game and you see that the third to last you know, CG wasn't unlocked, mm -hmm. and they do it chronologically, you'll know that there is a choice around there that may not have been as high as you wanted. Maybe that's something you'd want to reconsider. Take those little tidbits and just, you know, try to maneuver your way around it to see getting yourself the best possible outcome. Turn this Satome into a strategy game. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I, I remember somebody telling me early on, even long before the heroines even started, was like, oh, that's just a mindless game. I'm like, have you ever actually done the math? And the ratio of a Natome game, they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, you're one female protagonist. You have four potential routes. Each of those potential routes has three possible endings. So in theory, you have to go and get 12 possible endings. Break that down out of 100%. You have to do this and this. And I broke it down to them, down to the percentage. And they're like, what? I go, yeah, it's just a mindless game step the fuck off so don't let anybody talk you down from an atome and don't let them think that it's mindless either because it's not it's very calculated it's very mathematical it's just set in a narrative setting because it's it's that's the way it's going to pique your interest mm -hmm. so yeah when you want to get laid do math <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean and just really i can't emphasize enough don't don't be intimidated i mean i was like it, it was hard to get started, but, you know, once you do your first one, it's a lot of fun. And then when you see, like, if you do post it somewhere on your Tumblr and it, or your website and it starts to get notes and you realize you're helping people, um, for me, that's, that's the fun part. Like, knowing people come there and, and read it and, and going back to also to what you said, Pizza, like I've seen it before I've looked up a guide um well for the butler game that I last played and two people had a different guide but they both got the best ending so don't compare yourself either like set mm -hmm. your own goals um if you have friends like reach out to the community like even on Twitter I'll see breadmaster Lee and she's like oh my god I got the bad ending again how am I doing this wrong like everyone no one's perfect at this and the only way you get better is by trying. So give it a shot. 
And really, getting getting information and getting uh, advice from other people in the community is a great way to get to know people. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I was going through Icky's route in Amnesia, where I was like, somebody please help me. What am I doing wrong? I'm constantly fucking dying. <laughs> and then people are like, okay, well, what part are you at? I'm like, I'm at the fucking, I got to go left and I got to go right. It's not working out for me. And they're like, okay, this is what you know. Do you remember when this happened? What happened that you could possibly change? You're like, oh, yeah. okay. So, I mean, it, it's great like that, that you get to talk to people. And that's how you interact with people because Icky is a shitty route to fucking play. Well, and that's, that's something else that you're bringing up without realizing that's a very <laughs> good point. Sometimes your emotions get the best of you and you can't make a rational decision because maybe you keep dying to fangirls. <laughs> or maybe this douchebag won't give you some respect in his sunglasses. Yep. And you get agitated. It's okay to step back. You know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we can't step, stress that enough. Step back. Be logical. Remember that you're doing this for science. You're doing this for the Atome community. And you can't let this one bastard. You have to win him. And how do you win him? By making the strategy and owning his face. So that's yep. what you do. Stay focused. Yep. Or you can be Roger and just say, thank God. I'm glad he, I'm glad he did what he did to me. <laughs> and, and that's fine, too. Right. That's perfectly fine, also. And don't ever feel that if you don't finish the guide, like, you are, like, half-assing. No, you're not. I promise you, you're not half-assing it. Yeah. It, beco it becomes a game within a game. That's how I always describe a games like Amnesia or any Atome in general. I call it like Inception because it becomes a game within a game. After you finish the first playthrough and enjoy the flavor text and enjoy the development of the story, how it progressed, you know, the characters, the settings, Once then you start breaking into the actual nitty-gritty of the game. And it becomes psychological because you start to change your perspective based on your first playthrough. For myself, especially playing a game like Amnesia, where the premise was you know nothing about it, it started becoming a complete psych game for me, where it's like, okay, well, ideally I would think this, but he exhibits certain displays that make him just seem a little bit off. What do I have to do to change this up? Or what do I have to do in the best interest of my survival? And it becomes a game within a game. And, it's, and it makes the game more fun, because mm -hmm. that's what I enjoyed about Amnesia. I couldn't I didn't like the stories that I went through in, in in Amnesia, but I appreciated that they made me think, and it became a different a different type of a tell me for me. And that's one of the reasons why I both praise the game and I also bash it too. I, and I'm just like this: I can't fucking play this game. Fucking Toma. Fucking hey, Icky. Hey. Listen, <laughs> you know how I feel. You know why I feel that way. That just. And that's the other thing, too, is that you can get scared and you may not want to complete the route. That's okay, too. You take a step back and you just collect yourself and then you go back into it when you're ready. So it, it really, that's the fun of guide writing for everybody. And it's exactly as Sushi said, is that for her, the Excel spreadsheet, it becomes exciting. For me, I like seeing all of my doodles and scribbles and scrawls all over paper because I remember, oh, I remember what I was doing that day. I remember I fucking, you know, was super excited about something or I was super upset about something. You could see it, you know, when I was, you know, scribbling out. And I'm the queen of highlighters. I'm a dot and jot list kind of person. That's just the way I am. That's how I keep myself organized. And it's just, it's what works for me. I'm sure if I actually got into Excel, I would love it. But I just, I don't get into Excel as much as I do into like lists. So mm -hmm. for me, it's usually if I'm playing it, uh, if I'm playing the game on my uh, mobile Atome, it's a pen and paper. If I'm doing it on my phone, I may skip back and forth and go into my notes on my phone and just answer something there and then put it back. So it's different for everyone. It's different for everyone. Yep. <laughs> but, um,. I hope that gives a little more insight because I, I was like, how do I describe guide writing? Because mine's a clusterfuck. It really is. So hopefully that gives a little more insight. And of course, if anybody's listening to this episode and they have any questions, be sure to leave a comment to us either on Twitter or leave us a comment on the YouTube channel. And let us know because if, if there's something that we may not have been clear on, also please let us know about that because that's how, you know, we help each other is by, you know, educating by way of information so by personal experience really so 
hopefully that helps. But um, but yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you segue from this into this week in news and releases. I mean, that was like, you know, I got a very it. I got session. it. You got Ready? it? Ready. If you are interested in making gods and want to get started, next year would be the best opportunity because we get four plus games. Yep. That wasn't the best because you can start right now, but you guys get. I was trying. I was trying. No, I actually, I actually gave props. I was snapping, but you couldn't hear it because I was kind of doing it away from the microphone. I'm like, that's a good way to do it. And that's the other thing. That is a very interesting point. Is if you want to do it to a game that already has numerous guides out there, awesome. But if you want to try it on a completely fresh game that's going to be new and localized for NA or wherever you are for the first time. We have some suggestions for you. Anime Expo was the year of the Atome Armada. I got to give much props to the hashtag and everybody involved in it. Atome Armada was in full swing at Anime Expo, and I wish I was there. I was so sad that I could not be there. But they gave us so many announcements this year. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Axis Games. Well, and also um, Manga Gamer. Yes. Two announcements as well. That's right. That is, this was the year where, honestly, we're fucking making an impact in this world. They listened. And we need to be positive and support them and hope that the translations come through well and have a great time. Yep. We need to support it in any way we can. Um, I know from the Axis panel, um, the information that they gave was that they announced a fan disc that I'm still screaming about inside because that means I get what I finally want from Van Helsing. Yeah. <laughs> it's long overdue. I've been waiting forever. Give it to me. Smash Give is it. like, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for all of you, you Code Realize fans, if you enjoyed the game, fear not. There's a fan disc on the way and that means more options more cgs and maybe even kissing (laughs) yeah with tongue oh my goodness go team go go team (laughs) i don't know if nintendo has anything to say about it (laughs) (laughs) thank god this is sony so we can be as raunchy as we want yeah, exactly. I can even lick the screen probably and it'll work. That's right. <gasps> As you rub the back of the screen wanna... and rotate it and No, I want to say there was an Atome game. We might have to ask Corgi. I want to say there Please was an Atome game where you could kiss the screen. Wait, shut up. No way. I think so. Mm-hmm. I think right when I first started to get into Atome I think I remember someone tweeting about it. Maybe it was just something they were tossing around. But you know it has a touch screen, the Vita. Oh, I know. I so, oh, that, Why do you think I ordered one? That so, same day, I ordered a fucking Vita for me. I was like, so, yes. I don't know. I'd have to ask Corgi or um, somebody that would know. Oh, man. There, there's there's so many wonderful things to I look I can rub to. the clothes off my anime girlfriends. I don't know why I can't do the same off my anime boyfriend. But now here's the question. Can you whip them? And can we get laid together as a team? Yes, there's video of that. <laughs> I just want to take a mem- moment to recognize Catboy Mead. Just take a moment. <laughs> Represent. I pour one out for my homie. I love, I love you. But um, yes, if you guys have Vitas, sadly, there's only a few games for Tomes on the 3DS. I believe these are all coming out for the Vita and possibly PC. But Code Realize Fan Disc. Girls, you asked for it. I'm thinking of Flower Mika right now. These are all for you. <laughs> Jump on the bandwagon. Go for the gold. I know I am. I'm pretty damn stoked about it. Although the shitty situation is I bought Code Realize digitally. So it's currently on Simodian's account, not mine. <laughs> so he has the original Code Realize. But I don't. So I have to buy it again. But that's okay. <laughs> Well, worth it. Maybe I'll actually buy myself a physical copy for once. But I did want to actually reflect on a couple of the games that they did mention. Um, one of them being uh, Period Cube, 
which I'm pretty fucking excited about. Period Cube, I believe, has the same director of Amnesia. It was, or it was produced by the person who produced Amnesia, and it has the art style of Binary Star. And if anybody knows me, they know that I fucking am dying to play Binary Star, and I'm just, one day, one day I will play Binary Star. And when that day comes, I'm just never going to leave my house. I may not even be on the podcast for a few weeks. But Period Cube is, a, a, I believe, one about where you are in a video game. It's like a video game. Yeah, the protagonist is like searching for her lost brother inside of an MMO. Yep. And I have to say, like, with all of these games, um, minus, well, I don't know much about the fan disc. I assume it's a similar story to Code Realize, um, Guardian of Rebirth. But the other games have very unique stories. Mm -hmm. Um, Very different. I was really pleased when I was looking this up. So there's Period Cube, which you're inside an MMO, which instantly, you guys know me, reminded me of Persona 3. When Junpain gives you um, Innocent Sin online and then you start playing the game and it's an MMO and you kind of form a relationship with a girl there and then you find out it's your teacher, which is hilarious. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I instantly thought of that. Spoilers, Sam. Oh, my God. Oh, you, you, you for one, are not going to play Persona 3, so I apologize, pizza. But... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, all of them, the other two also have really interesting stories as well, so. Yeah, um, I, I believe Bad Apple Wars was like this death, rebirth kind of thing. Yeah, it says, I have an unconventional romance that takes place after death where you must choose a side for the heroine to start at the, on at the beginning of the game. So we're dead, like in Amnesia, but we're alive after death. So that's kind of interesting. And then Collar X Malice. That's one that I'm still actually trying to make more sense of. I don't have all the information about it that I'm kind of like, uh, wait. You're a police officer who must uncover the mystery surrounding a poison collar and attacker placed around your neck. Ah. These are really cool. Like, I seriously, I would really play these. Like, they sound... Like, they have some good, like, visual novel elements. Like, more of a chunky story. Like, Code Realize had a good story. Like, I couldn't predict what was happening in Code Realize. Um, Hell, no one could predict what was happening in Amnesia half the time. But these stories are, I don't know, they're just very different to me. And I I look forward to checking them out. So, I, I have to ask this. Going around the table, or the hypothetical table... On a scale of one to four, what's the number one game out of the four discussed that you would jump to pre-order? I have one in mind. I know for myself which one I'm going to pick up first. I'm curious about to you guys as well. Smashy? Uh, for me, Period <laughs> Cube, because it has an MMORPG. That Nerd. sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm probably going to do all... At least all three. I don't know if I'm going to do the fan disc. Um, if it has on it what I think it does, then I will break down and I will do it. But um, it's tough to pick. I think I kind of like Caller Malice. Caller X Malice. I think okay. I'll probably do that one. If I had to pick just one, it would probably be that one. Um, for myself, without a doubt, also period Q. I was so stoked to hear about that. And I was like, I'm probably going to play all the games. Nerd. Without a doubt, I'm going to play all the games. And it's tough going between Code Realize and going with Period Cube. But because I, I know and already have a love for, for Code Realize, that's just a given. I'm going to buy it regardless. Mm-hmm. I'm most excited to buy Period Cube. I am ready to be Kazuha. Kazuha. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I want to be her. I want to save my little brother. <laughs> Let's you go, go get, get him. him. I am. I'm going to get him. So, so the other announcement that they made is that mm-hmm. they're trying to bring Hakuoki Sweet School Life over. Um, and they're asking people to um, ask Idea Factory to bring it over. They want really? to support it, but they need Idea Factory to follow through. So... Um, 
I'm kind of like torn on this because I've played the Japanese version and the mini games are hell as Corgi on Twitter said <laughs> and she's right they they are hell they're worse when you don't know Japanese and you try and have to figure out what they're saying um but the story I wasn't really that impressed um but I know it's Hakuoki and we only have one over here where there's like a bazillion things over there so I understand the fan um desire and I'm cool with it I hope they bring it over I will purchase it um I'm very happy to support you know my husbandos and all that stuff but um I was curious I don't know if you have a feeling about it smashy but um you pizza how you felt like are you excited or are you kind of so so or I'm excited I I'm curious as to what information gets released between now and its launch and to see if it'll drive me in, I'll be honest, I'm like 40% interested, 50% interested, mm -hmm. but I'm still, I'm still going to definitely check it out at some point. I, I feel like it's piqued my interest enough that it's worth, you know, giving my money to. So I'm very curious as to what comes out or what more they release, you know, as we get closer. Yeah. Um, the, Smashy, did you have any? No. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, the last two games um, came from um, Manga Gamer, mm -hmm. and they're both 18 plus, um, which is exciting. A virtue ears, children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the first one is called Fashioning Little Miss Lonesome. And the story is when two handsome men spot the perfect girl to be their first model and help make a name for themselves, they determine to go for broke and make her shine. But first, they'll have to get her out of her house. Can these two really give such an antisocial recluse the makeover she needs to be a star? Or will she be the one to change them in this offbeat romantic comedy? Um, so I don't know. The artwork looked good to me. It has uncensored artwork. So, yay for that. Um, <laughs> it has English text, Japanese audio, and I think it's Windows only right now. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's next year, but I don't know if it has an official date. Um, I'm kind of curious to try that one out. I'm probably going to tap into that just for Mocha's sake because she tempts me all the time. Um, and the other one is a BL, 18 plus BL. And it's called Hadaka Shitsuji, and it's Naked Butlers. <laughs> um, <laughs> calm down, calm down, calm down. Okay. okay. <laughs> the protagonist loses his job and finds a strange flyer advertising another, you know, job. He shows up and finds an estate full of dazzling butlers. According to the butlers, the owner is out of town and they must continue to perform their duties even in his absence. So they are searching for a master, in air quotes, to give them orders. The protagonist's sadistic side begins to awaken as he continues to give them increasingly preposterous orders. Uncensored artwork. Thank you. English, text, Japanese audio, Windows, Macs, and links. So there's that one. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you go to their website, you can actually see some of the pictures, including some of the 18 plus ones as well. Mm. Yep, they're there on their website. <laughs> <laughs> can you confirm this? <laughs> I can confirm. <laughs> ah, what a wonderful time it is to be alive. Yeah, so, yeah, there's. There's that. <laughs> There's a lot to look forward to. Yep. I tell my fans. So if you don't have a Vita already, get one. And if you can't afford one, that's cool. Save up if you want. Or you could just wait for PC because I'm sure some of these games will come out on PC too. But I think that we have a lot to look forward to in 2017. 2016 was a good year. But 2017, oh, oh, my poor wallet. Yeah. It's going to be the year of the empty wallet for me. 
because that's going to take a lot of my money. And I really want to do a pre-order collector's edition. I've been telling myself this for years now that I will have one Atome game and I kept hoping it would be Binary Star localized in the States. It's just not happening for me at this point so I just have to move on and accept. But I've always wanted to have at least one pre-order collector's edition Atome game. Maybe Period Cube is it. We'll see. We'll see. So. Yeah, I have one of those pizza. Oh, do you now? The Sonic game. Oh my god. <laughs> what was in that collector's edition, Smashy? Um. Mm. Well, I don't have the physical collector's edition here yet because it's shipping from Japan, so I can't tell you goodbye. <laughs> oh my god. He texted me that there was a huge <laughs> box at his door, and he thought it was the mouse pad. And then he sends me a picture. It's not a mouse pad. It's a resting pad. Like, <laughs> it is it it is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> I just can't describe it. It's Sonico. You can rest an arm on that. Like, your whole arm. <laughs> or your <laughs> head. <laughs> or your neck. No comment. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh man. It's going to be great regardless though. Well, so one game that did come out this week or last week that is available right now that I noticed and it seems to be pretty popular um is called Mystic Messenger. It came out July 8th and right now I think it's just on Android but I think it is on iOS currently or coming to iOS. Um, at first I heard there were some bugs with that app, but I think they figured it out. But, um, I know a lot of people are playing it. Um, the people who developed it did Dandelion and Nameless. Um, which I have them on my Steam library, but I have not played them. But I know a lot of people do like them. Um, and then... Let's see, the summary of it, you stumbled upon an app called Mystic Messenger and downloaded it. Once you open it up, the app is connected to a mystic group chat with attractive guys. After a long chat, they ask you to join their secret party planning association called RFA. I don't know. I don't hmm. know. Yeah, but it seems pretty pretty popular on Tumblr, and I know a couple of people on Twitter that are checking it out, so... And then the only other one I had was the one you mentioned about I married a bazillion husbands or whatever it's called. Uh, Ten billion husbands? Yeah. It's it's honestly, it's just one of those, like, I need to pass the time. Or it's one of those, I'm sitting somewhere and I'm waiting for somebody to come because they're 15 minutes late. This is the game I'm going to play. That's yeah. how I do um, it. It's actually 11,959,451,901 husbands. Oh, is that so? God. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Can't yeah. just round down to 10. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it happens. It happens, you know? But I, it, it's fun. I'm just waiting to see. I'm hoping they'll show me a butler husband to marry. So, who knows? And that's the other thing, too. If anybody's been playing Notice Me Senpai lately, there's been a lot of updates to that game. There's a gotcha machine in there now that uh, you could play once a day, which is a lot of fun. And in addition... You can now feel up and Google your uh, senpai's goodies. It's great. Uh, I, not literally those goodies, but like his face and his hair, and he starts to blush. And oh feel. yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember doing that. It's not the it's not the love meter one. It's the most recent one. <laughs> okay, then no, I have not. I have not violated There's them. There's one where now you could just tickle the shit out of him while he's sitting there <laughs> drinking his tea or eating his sushi. Oh. I've been doing it to poor Butler Senpai the entire time. <laughs> it's been pretty great. I'm not going to lie. And that's the only one I do it to. I'm like, come on, Butler Senpai. Let's go hang out. I need to go pick up something from the closet. He's like, okay, as you wish, my lady. I'm like, oh, I'm going to tickle him. <laughs> that's really not how it happens, guys. I just hope. Anyway. Did you call me a person. <laughs> No, I call you the person that chooses random slores over your own family in Fire Emblem. That's what I call you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but on that note, 
because that's a way to end a show. That's all we have for you guys this week. We will be back uh, in two weeks to touch base and give you guys uh, the updated news on what's going on in the Otome world. See what you guys want us to, to chat about. If there is something that's piqued your interest that you want us to discuss here on the show, send us a message. You could send us one uh, at gmail, which is cbheroines at gmail.com, or you can also send one to us on the Twitters at cbheroines. Um, if you guys would like to reach me, you can reach me on Twitter at Pizza Maid or on Tumblr at Hoshido Hime. It's H O S H I D O hyphen H I M E dot Tumblr dot com. And of course, uh, I have a blog as well, Pizza Maid dot M O E. Sushi, how can folks reach you on the internet? I am Sushi Geisha on Tumblr and Twitter. I'm mainly a Twitter user, but Tumblr gets kind of fun late at night. And. Um, <laughs> A lot of fun yeah, fire emblem stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's another thing. I yeah, we need to maybe next show we talk fan fiction and our problems and how we need to get out like what's in our head, maybe. I have a lot of fire emblem crap going on. <laughs> oh man, I have to send you a link to something that I saw yesterday too. I'm gonna send it to you too, Smashy. <laughs> Um, Yay. So you can reach me on there. I also have a blog, uh, sushigeisha.co. And Smashy, how can folks reach you on the internets? I am on Twitter, at Tiagmoth2. That's it. That's, that's all I am. <laughs> and I'm desperately I don't tweet. Don't follow me. Right. That, I forgot that part, too. <laughs> you tweet sometime. <laughs> Sometimes you do, especially when it comes Let's to your see. beloved Sonic Go. Yep. Last tweet that I actually had, November twenty third, twenty fifteen. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's that. Like, include replies? No replies. No. Okay. <laughs> He's embarrassed. He's ashamed. <laughs> no. <laughs> I replied to people. Uh, there's a picture of cats, so I'm just. I'm done. I don't need to be anymore. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm trying to find something now for you and I can't find it. I saw it yesterday and I literally giggled my insides. I don't I want there to be more ad libs so I could find this and get your reactions. <laughs> well, we can find it after the show then. Okay. But I want to hear your reactions on the show. Okay. We'll find it. <laughs> I will search for it. <laughs> Literally, I was like, what the fuck am I looking at? And I'm like, this might be something that Sushi and Smashy might like. I don't know. I don't I've know. I've seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> I've said worse. Probably. Aww. I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was crazy. It was crazy. Where is it? Ugh. Oh. All right, I'm going to have to end the show because I just can't find it. Now I'm looking at rule 34, so. Go go on. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. We need to stop this. We're not a, I mean, yeah. we are 18 plus, but this show has not been advertised as an 18 plus show. Oh, I found it. I found it. Oh, I'm scared now. Oh, God. Wait, I found it. That took way too long Jeez. to find. I don't know if that sent to you. Oh, there you go. I've seen it. Oh, come on! Are you serious? I'm serious. I've seen oh, it. I thought I was so I was so proud of myself because I was finally being loose for once. No. Ugh. But I appreciate the effort as lewd lewd. I welcome. Even if it's a repeat lewd lewd, I, I, I welcome I it. I tried so hard. Oh, wow, there's a Cordelia one, too. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there. Oh, uh, you casuals. <laughs> <laughs> I tried so hard. I just literally am speaking. <laughs> On that note, everyone. You all have yourselves a wonderful evening. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Of course, you can also uh, find this episode on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and did I say YouTube already? And so. YouTube. And YouTube. There you go. <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you all in two weeks. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Good night.